Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I want to tell you about one of the easiest carpeting plants you can grow in your aquarium. It's called Helenthium Tenon Green and it's been growing so quickly in my low-tech aquascape. My low-tech aquascape has no CO2 and I'm just dosing it with some Tropicus Specialized Fertilizer. Along with good lighting and a good substrate, I managed to grow a copy of this Helenthium Tenon Green in about two months, which is really impressive to me as I'm not injecting any CO2 into the tank. Most carpeting plants are quite demanding. They're probably going to need high amounts of light, CO2 and good fertilizers as well. But this plant is way less demanding so this is why I think it's a really good plant for beginner aquascapers. Let me start by giving you guys some basic information about this carpeting plant. This plant was previously known as Echinodorus tenonus green but it was later renamed to Helenthium tenon green. Another common name you might see this plant being called is Pygmy Chainsword. This plant can be found growing in the wild in North, South and Central America. It's often found in marshy habitats as well. So potentially you could grow these in terrariums or podariums but you would have to keep the root systems as moist as possible to keep it growing. When grown in these conditions, the plant may even start to flower too. As you can see, this plant has a bright green grass-like appearance. This will help to give your aquascape kind of a lawn effect. This plant should be planted in the foreground of the aquarium as it grows to about 5-10cm to 10 centimeters in length. The way that Helenthium Telling Green will carpet your aquarium is that it will send runners out throughout your aquarium. These runners can spread out to be about 50 centimeters in length. When I set up my planted tank, I use about three to four pots of the Tropica Helenthium Tenon Green to make my carpet. And then about a week after I planted it, I started to see the runners start to grow across the foreground. And now these runners are kind of spread all over my aquarium because I didn't really keep them in check as much. But for my aquarium, I don't really mind this because I was trying to go for that jungle kind of look. If you wanted to, you could cut these runners off and then replant them in a different part of your aquarium or use them in a different aquascape if you wanted to. So here are some of my tips on how to grow a good Helenthium Tenon Green carpet. I think the first thing we should talk about is a substrate you're going to be planting the plant in. I recommend using a really nutrient rich soil based substrate. ADA Aquasoil Amazonia or the Tropica Aquasoil will work really well. These soil based substrates contain a lot of nutrients in them which is really good for the plant's roots. This will help to set up the plant initially when it's first planted and in the long term as well. If it's in your budget I recommend spending a little bit more money on the powder version of these substrates. The smaller grains of these soils make it a little bit easier to plant the plant in. It's also really useful for early root growth for the plant. The smaller size of the powder substrate will allow the roots to easily attach to it and hopefully this will prevent any uprooting issues you might have. Another really good tip for growing this plant is the lighting you need to use. This is a medium light demanding plant which means it will appreciate about 25 to 50 lumens per litre of water. I initially set up my aquascape with 25 lumens per litre of water and using that light setting I was getting crazy amounts of growth. I had to trim the carpet back every three weeks which was a little bit too much for my liking. So to reduce the growth rate to a manageable amount, I reduced the lighting to about 22 lumens per litre of water. This really reduced the amount of growth I was getting. So instead of trimming the carpet back every 3 weeks, I'm now trimming the carpet back every 5 weeks instead, which is a bit better for me. But if you're happy with that really fast growth rate, you can stick to 25 to 50 lumens per litre of water. Keep this in check though, you want to make sure your whole system is evenly balanced. Lighting is usually the main cause of excess algae growth in an aquascape. In order to make sure you don't have any excess algae growth, you need to make sure that your lighting, fertilisation and flow is all in balance. If any of these factors are out of balance in your planted aquarium, it can lead to algae growth. In my jungle aquascape, around the two month mark, I was running 25 lumens per litre of water, and I started to notice some staghorn algae growth. The main cause of this algae is usually due to low CO2 levels, but in my planted tank, I'm not running pressurised CO2. The best solution to fix this algae problem was to reduce the photo period and the intensity of the lighting. I reduced it to 22 lumens per litre of water, and I reduced the photo period to about 6 hours. And then within 2 weeks, the algae died away, and everything's alright ever since. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not using any pressurized CO2, but there'll be no harm in using pressurized CO2, it'll probably just increase the growth rate a little bit more. From my experience, I don't think it's necessary to have pressurized CO2 to grow this plant. I've been getting good growth rates without it, and I think this is down to the fertilizer I'm using on the lighting, which really helps. This is why I think Helenthium Tenon Green is a really good carpeting plant, especially for beginners. I understand that pressurized CO2 can be a little bit daunting for beginners, so it's nice to have an option of a carpeting plant that doesn't require pressurized CO2. For fertilizers, I like to use Tropica Specialized Nutrition, this fertilizer contains nitrogen and phosphorus which is really good for fast growing demanding plants like this. It also contains iron and manganese which is really good for bringing out the greens in the plant. In my 45 litre planted tank I'm dosing 5 mils of this once a week and it seems to be doing the job pretty well. I haven't seen any nutrient deficiencies or anything. You might need to play around the dosing levels for your own aquariums. This will just help to prevent any excess nutrients from entering the water column and causing any algae issues for you. Also to get really good healthy growth I recommend trying to get some flow down to the bottom of your aquarium. This will just make it a little bit easier for the nutrients to become available for the Helenthium Tenon Green that's at the bottom of your tank. As with all planted tanks, you should aim to have 10 times the amount of flow compared to your litres of water. So for example, my current is 45 litres, so I want to aim for a turnover of about 450 litres per hour. This will hopefully mean we're getting some good circulation around the tank so that all the plants can get the nutrients they need. Planting this plant is relatively easy. When you buy your Helenthium Tenon Green, it will usually come in a pot. 
the best thing to do with it is to split it up into as many individual plantlets as you can. The more plantlets you can get out of the main pot, the better. This will help you get as much coverage as you can from using one pot. If you densely plant your foreground with the Helen from Turning Green, the quicker the carpet will establish itself. For planting, I like to use microscoping tweezers. You can use your straight tweezers or curl tweezers. It all just depends on where you're going to be planting this plant. For me, there were some tricky areas near the manzanita wood where I had to use my curl tweezers. So it's always useful to have both sets of them. What you're going to need to do is place the Helen from Turning Green plantlet in between the tweezers. Then gently push down the plant into the substrate so the roots are fully covered. And then finally, all you got to do is just gently release the tweezers, which will then allow the rest of the substrate to fall back in to secure the plant. It may take a long time, especially if you've got a really large foreground to plant, but putting this effort in when you start your aquascape will really pay off in the long term. You'll get a really good looking, easy to grow carpet. Trimming this plant is super easy as well. Since this plant has a really grassy appearance, it kind of reminds me of mowing the lawn. I found that using sharp, curved aquascaping scissors are the best way to cut this plant. It gives you a really good angle to cut the Helenthian tanning green as flat as you can when using the trimming. You can harshly trim this plant and it'll grow back pretty well. You'll start to see some bright green growth for about 2-3 to three days after trimming. Another thing that's really important after you trim this plant is to remove all the excess cuttings. If you don't remove them then this can increase the levels of organic matter in your aquarium. And then with this increase in organic matter in your aquarium it could lead to algae spikes which you don't want. When you're trimming any carpeting plant you gotta make sure you be careful. Fish and shrimp may be hiding in there so just be careful when you're going around cutting it. Now that I gave you most of the tips you'll need on how to grow Helenthian Town and Green, I just want to let you know on some downsides about this plant. Like I said earlier, it can grow really really quick, which does sound really good, but there is a bit of a downside to this. Since the plant does spread out by using runners, the individual plantlets can start to overlap each other a little bit. And this is how you start to form a dense carpet. You may notice after several months the carpet might be starting to get a bit too thick. I've noticed that with my carpet especially it has got really thick, and this has been a little bit of an issue for me. Some of the Helenthian Town and Green, especially the lower parts, aren't receiving enough light. So what might end up happening is you have some leaves that turn yellow or just start to completely die. The best way to get around this problem is to thin out the carpet from time to time. You may need to start manually removing some individual plantlets from the carpet. This will just help to thin out the Helenthian Tanning Green carpet. By thinning out the carpet you'll start to see some better growth again. What can easily happen with a really thick overgrown carpet is that the lower levels of the plant will start to rot away. And then this can cause a build up in organic matter in your aquarium. To avoid this issue you need to keep the carpet as clean as you can. Kind of like how you siphon clean substrate. You want to be able to remove as much of the detritus as you can from the carpet. It's pretty easy to do, but it's a bit time consuming as well. All you need is a turkey baser and a siphon. I'll make a video on how to do this for you guys. So I think that's all the information I can give you about Helenthian Tenon Green. I'm also going to leave a link to where you can buy some Helenthian Tenon Green. It is a bit on the pricey side, so if you can do a bit of shopping around to find it cheaper, I recommend it. I hope you found this guide useful. If there's any other plants you want me to make a guide for, let me know in the comments below and I'll happily make it. And if you managed to get this far, if you enjoyed the video, please can give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot.